inside Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. With over a billion dollar net worth, former US President Donald Trump is likely one of the wealthiest men ever to have lived in the White House. The Mar-a-Lago resort is just one of a handful of impressive estates owned by Trump, but what does this sprawling Florida estate really have to offer? We take a virtual look inside the impressive Palm Beach property. Let's get it on. This historical estate is an architectural work of urban art that sits on a huge beachside plot in Florida's Palm Beach. Architects Marion Sims Wyeth and Joseph Urban designed the resort, which is situated between two key waterways. The 62,500 square foot estate borders the Atlantic Ocean on one side and Florida's intercoastal waterway on the other. The beach hideaway was completed in 1927 and has around 126 rooms throughout the property. The unique Florida property has a rich history dating back to the Jazz Age, also known as the Roaring Twenties. Referred to by Trump himself as the great estate of Palm Beach, the generous plot is home to a number of lavish features, including a 20,000 square foot ballroom decorated with $7 million worth of gold leaf, four $100,000 gold plated sinks, a library paneled with centuries old British oak and rare first edition books. The tropical setting is filled with impressive amenities ranging from lounge areas to sports courts. An oceanfront swimming pool overlooks the Atlantic Ocean with a neat border of tall palm trees surrounding the spacious area. Seaside cabanas are located along the edge of the resort, just one of the many relaxing spots available for private members to enjoy. Millionaire club members enjoy all these amenities with five-star service from a huge team of staff. A staggering 600 workers, including 300 artisans from Europe, toiled away on the construction project. The Dorian stone used for the exterior was imported from Italy in three boatloads. Tens of thousands of antique tiles dating from as far back as the 15th century were acquired from a prominent collector and castle in Cuba. Fixtures were plated in gold, which Marjorie Post, serial company heiress, socialite, and the original owner thought was easier to clean. When all was said and done, the project went eight times over budget, with the final bill coming in at $7 million. A large chunk of the grand total was spent on the astonishingly opulent living room. The statement ceiling is almost an exact replica of the glorious thousand-wing ceiling in Venice's Academia, and together with the walls is covered in so much gold leaf, America's entire supplies were said to have been exhausted decorating the room, which Marjorie packed with prized antiques including an Italian Renaissance table, 17th century Spanish rug, and silk tapestries from a Venetian palazzo. The dining room is equally lavish. Modeled on a Sala da Pranzo in Rome's 16th century Palazzo Chigi, it has a similar Italian Renaissance vibe. The enormous 4,000-pound dining table was crafted at great expense by 15 artisans at Florence's prestigious School of the Medici, who spent a year just making the remarkable piece, which was studded with colorful semi-precious stones. The property is a super eclectic mishmash of styles, particularly the guest and owner's bedrooms, which number 58 in total. Marjorie and designer Joseph Urban drew on global inspiration. There was a Dutch room decorated with antique Delft tiles, a Murano glass-adorned Venetian room, and Spanish and Portuguese rooms. She plumped for an exceedingly ornate Louis XIV French Baroque theme for her private quarters, which incidentally is Trump's favorite style. The Versailles master bedroom in the owner's quarters poses in all its splendor. Over the years, the mega mansion's diverse design elements have come to be appreciated, but that wasn't the case back in the 1920s. The cacophony of clashing styles and Marjorie's penchant for glitz were slammed by architectural critics at the time and Palm Beach's snootiest residents, no doubt, who regarded Mar-a-Lago as a vulgar eyesore. Scores of staff were required to maintain the outrageously ostentatious property, and as the Cold War intensified in the 1950s, Marjorie even went to the trouble of installing three bunkers, but she spent just six weeks of the year from New Year's to George Washington's birthday at Mar-a-Lago. Still, the scion was as generous as she was extravagant, and along with hosting the elite, she held charity benefits at the estate and had a convalescent center for injured soldiers built on the grounds during the Second World War. Towards the end of her life, the pampered heiress worried about the future of her beloved Mar-a-Lago. Fearing the property would be demolished, she came up with the idea of bequeathing it to the nation to serve as a permanent winter White House. 
Initially, the federal government was lukewarm about the proposal but accepted the gift in 1972 after Marjorie agreed to cover the maintenance costs. She died the following year. Marjorie's generous bequest turned out to be a poison chalice for the government. She had left just $3 million to maintain the property, but the costs soon ballooned to a million dollars a year, an annual bill the government was ultimately unwilling to foot. President Nixon favored staying at his Key Biscayne home when he visited Florida. President Ford had little interest in the estate, and the famously humble President Carter saw it as a frivolous extravagance. According to the City Journal, Trump is said to have first heard about Mar-a-Lago from a taxicab driver during a drive around Palm Beach and knew there and then that he just had to have it. To the flashy real estate mogul, Marjorie's winter retreat represented the ultimate trophy property. Over the years, the resort has proven a success, having earned the five-star and six-star diamond awards from the Academy of Hospitality Sciences. Beach Mansion Mar-a-Lago gets its name from the Spanish term for sea to lake. When the estate went on the market for $20 million, Donald Trump was looking to purchase a Palm Beach home and set his sights on Mar-a-Lago, offering $15 million. This offer was rejected and the controversial billionaire instead purchased the beach at the front of the property. After threatening to build to obstruct the ocean view of Mar-a-Lago, he secured the purchase of the home for $5 million plus an additional $3 million for the antiques and furniture. In classic Trump style, various improvements were made, including the addition of a 20,000 square foot ballroom, the decorating of which involved $7 million worth of gold leaf and the installation of gold-plated sinks. In 1989, portrait painter Ralph Wolf Cohen painted a portrait of Trump that came to be titled The Visionary. Cohen had known Marjorie when she was the owner and wanted to paint the new resident. Rather than paint Trump in one of his trademark suits, Cohen gave him a more Florida look, portraying him in tennis whites. Anthony Seneca, Trump's butler and unofficial historian, described to the New York Times how the library was paneled with centuries-old British oak and filled with rare first-edition books that no one in the family ever read. When in financial straits in the early 90s, Trump announced plans to divide the historic home into several mini-mansions in order to make the estate lucrative. This proposition worked the Preservation Society of Palm Beach into a veritable fever, and the plans were hastily blocked. Trump now had to think of another way that the house could earn its keep, and thus the Mar-a-Lago Club was born. Opening in April 1995, the club reportedly charges a $100,000 joining fee plus $14,000 annually and a minimum of $2,000 spent on food. The joining fee allegedly doubled to $200,000 after Trump's presidential victory. Unlike other Palm Beach clubs, Mar-a-Lago welcomed Jewish, African-American, and openly gay members, surprising given Trump's record of offending almost every minority group. But all has not remained serene at Mar-a-Lago. In 2006, Trump sued Palm Beach Town for violating his right to free speech. The reason? The real estate mogul had installed an 80-foot flagpole, 38 feet taller than the maximum height permitted by the town council, and that incurred a $250 a day fine. He sued for $25 million, but the lawsuit was settled on the condition that the pole be shortened to 70 feet and Trump make a $100,000 donation to veterans' charities, an effective PR move to resolve the case. This was not the end of Trump's entanglement with the Palm Beach authorities. In 2015, he began a lawsuit against Palm Beach County for the deliberate and malicious action of directing flights from Palm Beach International Airport right over Mar-a-Lago. The lawsuit has since been dropped. The Trump family maintains a strong connection to Mar-a-Lago, spending Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year there. Eric Trump was also married there in 2014. However, when Trump was president, a new set of ethical dilemmas faced the U.S. government. Soon after he assumed office, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer referred to Mar-a-Lago for the first time as the Winter White House. Complications occurred because the estate is a Trump-run business, where the president chooses to stay, entertain important guests, and host events are usually funded by the government. So the government footing the bill for Mar-a-Lago would have been problematic as the money would go directly to Trump. When Trump hosted Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe at the Palm Beach Club soon after these ethical questions were raised, he offered to foot the bill for the stay. Beyond government concerns, there were and remain more local frustrations. When Trump visited Mar-a-Lago, the area was declared a no-fly zone, effectively bringing Palm Beach International Airport to a standstill. Businesses also felt the pinch as roadblocks and extra security measures prevented them from opening, leading to dramatic drops in income. 
The club has welcomed a long list of celebrities over the years, including Michael Jackson and Lisa Marie Presley, who spent their honeymoon there. Other stars who visited the club, whether for pleasure or to perform at a function, include Oprah Winfrey, Martha Stewart, Tiger Woods, Billy Joel, Vanessa Williams, Liza Minnelli, and Sylvester Stallone. While some held rallies supporting the former president's return to Palm Beach after leaving office, not everyone was pleased to see Trump return. Some affluent neighbors opposed his permanent move to Mar-a-Lago. A letter was sent to the town council in December 2020 requesting that a 1993 agreement prohibiting any club member, including Trump, from staying at the property for more than three weeks a year be duly enforced. The council's attorney reviewed Trump's residency in February 2021, coming to an agreement that he could stay. At the council meeting, a lawyer for the former president explained that Trump is a club employee, which means he is within the decades-long agreement that states that no one can live at Mar-a-Lago unless they work there. Mar-a-Lago remains heaven on earth, but for those with deep pockets. And that's it from us today. What are your thoughts on Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to click the subscribe button for more of our luxurious content and give us a like and share. This is The Luxurious. Talk to you in the next video.